Hey everybody, Matt Bell at the Electric Violin Shop in beautiful Durham, North Carolina, United States. Several years and a bunch of haircuts ago, we did a video series called From Classical to Radical that was designed to help experienced string players who are inexperienced in the amplified world sort of navigate their way through this. What are some of these terms that we're using? How do I plug a violin in? What are all the different things that are happening in the amplified world that are not happening in the classical world? So that video series is available on our YouTube channel. I think it'll be really helpful for you. I was younger, was prettier, but I had worse hair. So uh, yeah, enjoy that series. Hopefully it'll be helpful for you. I really like doing video series, so it's time to start another one. This one is called Effects on Violin. First week, we're in right now. So what's gonna be happening in this series? Each week, we're gonna hit a different effect. Imagine like reverb or delay. We'll give general information on that effect what some of the common parameters are for those effects, and then examples of uses on string instruments. And for some of them, we're gonna bring in guest artists that will be talking about what they do with that particular effect. So I think it's gonna be really exciting. It's a lot of fun. I'm lining up all those guest artists right now. I can't wait. This week, week one is gain structure. And you're like, I don't know what that is. It's not an effect. I'm pretty sure it's not an effect. It's not, but it is the thing that you have to get right or none of this stuff is gonna matter. One of the things that I'll hear from people about electric strings is, I think this thing's got built-in compression, meaning as I play it harder, it's not getting louder, right? I feel like I'm, I'm pushing up against a limit or something. This thing must have built-in compression. They don't. They don't have built-in compression. If you play harder, it's going to get louder, and it's going to get louder at the same proportion that your acoustic violin does. If that's not happening for you, you have a gain structure problem or you're using compression or distortion. That's another discussion. If you've got a clean sound and you're playing harder and it should be getting louder and it's not, it's because you have a gain structure problem. And that's what we're going to teach you how to fix today. Everything you plug into has a certain, as a circuit that's a certain size. And we got the Goldilocks principle. We got to get it right. If we got it too much or too little, that's a problem. Imagine that this is a circuit and this is the size. This is the top of the circuit and the bottom of the circuit. At the very bottom, we have a noise floor. Every circuit creates noise. That's just the reality of things. They're all different, but every circuit does have a noise floor. If you ever turned up an amp all the way, even with nothing plugged into it, and you hear that little hiss, that's the noise floor. So this is a diagram of a circuit with good gain structure. Our nominal operations, sort of the middle, you know, our, our low notes, our quiet notes are down here, loud notes are up here, mezzo forte is in the middle. So we've got a good gain structure here. Nominal's kind of in the middle of where that circuit size is. Fortissimo is up here, about minus 15. And on a digital circuit, that's kind of where we want our, ex our expected peaks to be. Uh, Sometimes if you get in front of a crowd, you may play a little louder than you did during a sound check. That would be what we'd call an unexpected peak. That's still safe. We're into the yellow area, but that's fine. And then if you like slam your bow into the thing or somebody bumps it, that would be an unexpected peak. And if it's clipping in that situation, well, we're okay with that because that's not a thing that we really expect to happen. So this is what good gain structure looks like on any given circuit. This would be bad. So this is a waveform that I recorded in Logic, and you can see it's a little too, it's too weak. We've got a bad signal to noise ratio, which means that the noise is gonna be like that loud, and if my playing is only this loud, well, we're gonna hear that hiss over the playing, right? So we've gotta get the signal loud enough that you don't really hear that hiss anymore. This is too much. This is where we've got this thing loud and you can see, wow, I feel like there should be peaks that are maybe outside the size of the circuit and there are. Well, the circuit, it can't pass, so it clips them off and that's what causes sort of that grindy distortion sound that you hear and, oh, I don't like that. So this is the porridge is just right. We've got a little bit of space on either side. You see a little bit of blue on either side of the loudest notes, but we've got enough signal that it's gonna be louder than that little hiss that's at the bottom of every circuit, and this is where we, uh, we've we got ourselves just right. But we've gotta manage this for every wireless, every preamp, every pedal, every amplifier, every DI, the soundboard, all this stuff. Every one of these circuits, we have to get the gain right for that circuit. 
and a bunch of them don't have meters. Now, if you do have a meter on there, on an analog circuit, we want to get our peaks close to zero dB. Uh, on digital, we want to get our peaks somewhere around minus 12 to minus 15. That is because analog distortion is a very different animal than digital distortion. We don't really want either, but if you're going to have one, analog distortion actually sounds a lot more organic. Digital distortion, you'll know immediately it's bad. You don't want that. You don't want digital distortion. If there are colors, so you've got a meter that's got colors in it. So it's got some green LEDs, a yellow LED, and a red LED. We want our peaks to be sort of in that green to yellow area. We should just be starting to hit yellow. Red is bad. We don't want red. Okay. So every piece of gear, we've got to figure, we've got to get this signal strength right. So I've got the violin here. We're going into the bags. We've got to get the signal strength right on the bags. We've got to get it right on the pog. We got to get it right on the HX stomp. We've got to get it right in the amp. And you're thinking this is really overwhelming and it sounds like a lot of work. It is. That's one of the reasons that you don't want your pedal board to be any more complicated than it has to be because you have to manage this gain structure for every one of these elements. And if you don't get it right, it's not going to sound good. So how are we going to know since like the pog doesn't have a meter on it? Uh, you know, how are we going to know if I've got the gain structure wrong on that? Well, you're going to use your ears and you're going to have to learn how to hear clipping. So I told you, you could have too little signal or too much signal. Most of us gravitate toward the too much thing. We're amplifying for a reason. And our sound guys have always been yelling at us. Hey, I need more signal. It's weak out here. Turn it up. I, you, you got that thing all the way up. So we're, most of us are going to tend toward the clipping side. We've got to learn how to hear that clipping, and that takes a little bit of practice. So what I do if I'm trying to hear if a circuit is clipping, I'm going to play double stops. Double stops are what put the most pressure into that circuit. And if you're playing major, minor, thirds, fourths, tritones, you're going to hear some things that are going to show you if a circuit is clipping or if it's near the edge. So what we're listening for, we're listening for mud, we're listening for fuzziness. We're listening for over and undertones, listening for compression. We're looking for sustain. And I'm gonna give you some examples here. This is a clean sound right here that, uh, that sounds good. There's no, there's no clipping here at all. So listen. So we can hear all the way around the edges of those notes. We don't want to hear any fuzz. We don't hear any of that other stuff. This is a, I turned up my bags too loud and made it start clipping. And this is what a bag sound like if it's clipping. hear a little bit of a sort of there's an edge to that sound that we didn't have on the clean one. Here is a different type of clipping. This is a studio preamp. I pushed a little bit too hard. I'm kind of hearing some of the undertones in there. You hear a note that like a tartini tone that's lower than the, than the double stop, but it's kind of, it's fairly significant. You can hear it. Uh, that's where we don't want that. This is a different circuit. Again, not ideal. You can hear just, you're just able to hear these things. And I didn't over exaggerate these because I want you to hear how subtle some of this can be, but it's going to affect your sound. And if you're hearing those types of things, that that's not good. So I, I did over exaggerate this one a little more. This is a uh, this is another circuit. One of the things we're hearing there is some mud. I'm also hearing some some compression and sustain at the end of there. If you're hearing that thing sustain a lot longer than it should. That's one, an indication that you probably got some clipping. And here's the last one.
Yeah, also some mud. We got some compression sustain. We got some grindiness in there. Those are all examples of things that you will hear when you when you hear clipping in a circuit. Now, as you're setting up your signal chain, be aware of the sound check sandbag. If you're just on the jagged edge of clipping when you're sound checking, you are 100% going to be clipping on stage. Why? There's a 500 people in front of you. They're yelling at you. They're going to make you play louder. You're playing with your band and they're going to cause you to play louder. So you want to make sure that during your sound check, when there's not a bunch of people, when the band's not playing, that you've got lots and lots of headroom in there. Because once you get people in front of you and you've got a band playing with you, you're going to need that extra headroom. So one of the ways we can check to see if we've got good gain structure is we can take our whole pedal board and we can plug it into our DAW and we can record it. And what I did in this situation is I put the, my pedal board into a direct input and then I turned my monitors off and I mic'd my, you can mic your electric violin. You just stick a mic on it and then, you know, make sure that you don't have any sound going in the room other than your electric violin. Record yourself playing the instrument and then record the sound that's coming out of your pedal board. You should see, now the waveforms are going to be different shapes a little bit because we are doing things to them, but the dynamic range, the, the loudness at the, from your quietest note to your loudest note, that dynamic range, unless you're intentionally adding compression, should be the same. So here's what I'm seeing here. You got the two uh, white arrows there. I open up a loudness meter on each track and you can see that the range from my quietest note to my loudest note was about 20 dB on the microphone and it was about 20 dB coming out of my pedal board. That's good. In this one, you can see that what's coming out of my pedal board, we can see first of all that there aren't any peaks on there. They've all kind of been sawn off. That's an indication that something's clipping somewhere. And then we can also meter that. The sound coming off my violin with a microphone, the range from quietest to loudest was 16 dB. Out of the pedal board was only 10 or 11. So that means that we're squeezing that signal somehow, which means since I didn't intentionally add any compression, it means that I have a gain structure problem. So if I'm troubleshooting my pedal board, what do I do? I plug the violin into the very first thing, probably a preamp. And then I unplug everything else. And I take the output of the preamp and I listen to that. And I got to get that right. We've got to make sure the gain and the volume and all that is set so that I don't have any clipping. I don't have any grinding. I don't have any of that muddy kind of stuff that we hear with a gain structure problem. We get that sounding right. Then we add the next pedal and we do this again. And it could take you quite a while but you're gonna, as you start getting these things right, you're gonna hear your sound is going to be cleaner and better. Now, remember the very first thing going into your signal is your violin. If you've got a YEV, it's pretty likely that it's too hot. We sell a ton of YEVs. I really like the way they sound, but when I play one, I put it at half volume because the output on those is so hot that it overdrives just about anything you've got it plugged into. So I wouldn't keep my YEV above about half volume unless I've really got a lot of headroom on some of these circuits. So start with that. And then as you're adding in each of these pedals, you might've had eight pedals in your pedal board. By the time you get to pedal number three, you're like, this is actually what I wanted the whole thing to sound like. And I've still got five pedals sitting here. Well, some of those pedals that you bought might have been, you bought those to try to fix problems that you had with your earlier pedals because you had a gain structure problem. So you're trying to polish that particular uh, turd right there and that can't be done. So the fewer pedals that you can use and still get the sound you want, that's great. That's what's gonna have a lower uh, chance of complication with gain structure issues. You're gonna have fewer patch cables to go bad. You've got fewer power supplies to manage, all that. So get the gain structure right on your system and you're going to find out what it actually sounds like. And you may go, gosh, I don't even think I need these other two pedals. It sounds great now. That's wonderful. So as always, please subscribe to our channel, mash that subscribe button as the kids would say, and then check out these other videos that we've got. Hopefully those will be interesting for you too. And we will catch you guys next time.